Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Genuine APVT. This is uh, Zephyr at about five, five years. Stop. Yeah, that's, not, that's not good. He loves to grab grass or plants. You got to be careful with these guys. Sometimes they reach out and just grab stuff. Anyways, just wanted to do a quick little video. Um, it's part of a bigger video that I'm going to put up a few months from now, but He's right about, he turned five at the end of December, so he's just over five years old. And um, he's just exercising beautifully, and he has, uh, I think he's got some great potential to still look fantastic at five years old. Uh, I think it has a lot to do with, of course, the genetics, but then it's what you do with the genetics how you feed the dog, the husbandry, everything else that goes into keeping the dog. Um, and it's something that you each have to go out and figure out for yourself. But if you look at the physique of this dog, he does not resemble a five-year-old dog. Um, I would think not. I've seen a lot of people with dogs that are uh, past their prime, quote unquote, which could be two to three and a half years old. And then after that, they kind of just seem to go downhill fast. I think it's because people don't have the right genetics and because people don't challenge their dogs. They're not honest and they don't want to really push the limits to see what their dog can achieve at five or six years old. I've done it. I've done it with Coco. I'm going to do it with Zephyr. I want to videotape everything and put it all together with you eventually. But um, just that I'd put a little video up and just let you know that we're working them out. Uh, really hard from here um, we'll do um, some sprints with the ball so fetching with the ball on a resistance band I can't videotape that and because uh, there's no one there to help me videotape it but uh, come on let's go let's go come on we'll do some uh, resistance which is sprints with the resistance band and then also uh, some flirt pull. So that'll be good for today. Uh, we usually do about uh, four miles of road work. Today wasn't that. Today is just uh, about a mile, a little over a mile, just to warm them up. And then we also incorporate a bunch of other stuff. But I'm not going to tell you what that is. Each person has to have their own workouts or wherever they, you know, their bag of repertoire meaning their secret stuff that they like to use. And that's part of working out your dog. That's part of when you compete. Another thing I wanted to say just briefly is, and I'll talk about it more in the other video, but another thing I wanted to say just briefly is, um, when you shred your dog down, let's say for an ADBA competition, I have said in previous videos that I love the ADBA. I love the competitions. Um, I love the confirmation shows and everything else that's associated with that but stop stop it but um i do that and i don't want them to pick that up because a lot of times people put chemicals on their grass and then you wonder why your dog breaks out on hives and a bunch of other stuff well these dogs put their mouth on everything and so i rather snap his leash and snap him out of it than to have to deal with dealing with an allergic reaction to whatever i don't know is on the grass Anyways, when you shred a dog down, let's go. When you shred a dog down for the way the ADBA is kind of conforming their champions right now, it's really hard on them. It's hard on them because in order to get them shredded like that, there's a lot of things that you have to do that might not be the healthiest for the dog. So I'm not, I'm not trying to shred him down that way. What I'm trying to do is get him in the best um, condition and then show you some pictures of series come on let's go let's go show you a series of pictures um so you could see what the combination is between keeping them at a solid weight because you need weight in order for there to be strength um, the awa champions look great the confirmation dogs but i don't think in fact i know that if you were to compete with them in an agility situation where there would be hog hunting or any other type of extreme physical 
uh, competition, they wouldn't do well. They don't have enough energy packed into their shredded body. It's like a bodybuilder that's super, super shredded. If you were to set him in a situation where he would have to go, let's just say wrestling, okay? With an UFC uh, or an MMA guy, it would never happen. He could never even do three minutes. It's been shown already. There's been videos of that. So the bodies that we're used to seeing that maybe look like they're extremely fit, they're not always the strongest bodies and the most useful bodies. So I want to do what's in between. I want to... Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Pick it up. Good boy. I want to go with what's in between and show him fully conditioned, but at the same time, the balance of not losing a bunch of weight to where you shred it and it's not useful. Again, so the idea here is to keep the dog's heart rate up as part of its conditioning. And what you see me doing here is uh, I have his 20 foot lead attached to the resistance band. So he's getting about 20 feet of free run and then 30 feet of resistance towards the end, which is really good. Helps him become way more explosive and uh, it's really good for their cardio. Um, See that, that's where the resistance kicks in, about right where he comes into that section of the video, brings the ball back. And we do this for about another 30 minutes. And then we incre increase it more and more as his cardio gets better. Um, <clears throat> and you wanna make sure that you're always monitoring that. Uh, make sure that your dog is not exhausted to the point where he's frothing at his mouth and he's just panting uncontrollably. And then we finish up uh, with uh, some flirt pole. Um, and you can see here, Zephyr's five and a half years old again. In this particular day, on this particular day, we did about a mile and a half, a little less than that to warm up. And then we did about 15 to 17 minutes of fetching with the resistance band. And then we finished it up with uh, about 12 to 13, 14 minutes of this flirt pole. Of course, I'm not going to show 12 minutes of me playing with him with the flirt pole, but just wanted to give you guys an idea what a basic routine day looks for him. There's days that we change it up and we throw in the spring pole. Uh, again, uh, I don't know if you've seen another video that I did with him when I was talking about comparing raw feed to kibble. He wasn't interested at all in the spring pole. He's not interested if you just, if I just hang the spring pole with a chain, a porch spring, and a uh, fire hose tug, he's not that interested in it. There's just not enough action at the other end of that thing to keep him going. He's a high prey, prey drive dog, so it's going to be difficult when it's just a rag or a, a rope or something just hanging there, but what you do is you don't give up, right? Because if you want him to have that exercise on the spring pole, you have to change it up. You have to change the apparatus enough to where he stays interested and then he can take full advantage of the apparatus, which in this case is the spring pole. Not what you're seeing. Obviously what you're seeing is the, um, the flirt pole. But talking about the spring pole again, we were able to accomplish that because I put a different type of resistance. I took the porch spring off, which was heavy because uh, Zephyr's pretty heavy, and I put in a, a heavy-duty bungee, and I put in a one-inch rope with knots, and he loves that. He loves that because when he goes up to grab it and he lets go of it, it goes crazy. It doesn't just swing back an inch. It goes up five, six, seven feet in the air, and to him, that's, I guess it resembles enough prey to get him extremely interested, so he's doing really well on that. And like I said, we're only about a month, a month into this exercise. I want to take it really, really slow because he's five, a little over five years old. And I want to see how he does. But I think he's going to do really, really good. And um, uh, let me know in the comments how heavy you think he is. Okay? Because a lot of people think, well, if he's in his 60s and you shred him down to the low 50s, he's going to look great. But again, we go back to what I was talking about. That is not the objective that I want to do here. I don't, I mean, you can get a dog to look really fit, sadly, by just thinning him down. But then the dog would have absolutely no power. Uh, and even though he would want to, you know, if he was bred right and he's got intensity and he's really committed, he's, he's going he's gonna to go for it and he's going to try, but you're kind of going to, you're going to wear him out because he just doesn't have that, you know, reserve of fat that they need. They do need 
a certain reserve of fat. And that's the, that's the trick. The trick is finding the balance of how much power can I get from the dog with the fat he's retaining. And at the same time, how much fat can I leave in that wouldn't impede the dog weight wise and cardio wise. So that's a science. And, and not only is it a science to do it, but then it becomes even more tricky according to each individual dog, because every dog is different. So again, there's so much more to be said. That's why I'm going to do a follow-up video with a lot more detail in a few months, but just wanted to show this as a little bit of a, uh, an update on how he's working out. And lastly, what are you feeding him? Because you can have the genetics, but it's how are you pushing the genetics uh, in how you feed him. So this is our post-workout feeding. Some of the stuff is really obvious, like the chicken and the liver and the ground meat. But the stuff that looks like ice cream and caramel is obviously not ice cream and caramel. The powder and some of the tabs there. It's some of the stuff that we hold in-house and I just don't feel the need to share with everybody. And I think that's good for the Pitbull community. We're highly competitive with one another and it's a good, healthy comp competition. It's good for the new guys too because it forces you guys to go out and do your research and do your own implementing and your own dogs. Um, but anyways, yes, it's like if you have a 930 Turbo Porsche set up for racing and you just put the wrong kind of fuel and the wrong kind of maintenance, that's like the genetics not being handled correctly. So it's not just genetics, genetics. Yes, they're important, but when you have two equally genetic dogs, it's whoever feeds it better, whoever uh, maintains the dog and works it out better. So I cannot stress that enough. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you for all my new subscribers. Thank you for everybody that subscribes to this channel. I hope everybody is doing well. And uh, like I always say, know your dogs, love your dogs, and raise them responsibly. Uh, we owe it to this beautiful breed.